I hope future Whoa. quake. So is you're not saying, on that. so you're saying here that this uh, par, this investigative reporter par excellence, has gotten uh, a high level NSA official to say that they just want to kill troublesome bloggers. Yes, and journalists. And journalists. And I've got names here. Well, okay. let's well, lay it on us. Okay. Uh, it says uh, Wayne Madsen always spoiling for a fight with Bush and Cheney or the chance to show off uh, uh, his battle with uh, airport TSA workers has an executive level NSA staff personal record saying that significant sentiment exists to kill these people. Wow. Uh, the NSA executive staffer said apparently not the source of the sentiment within NSA, but this individual did pass on the context and the precise wording of the junior uh a staff person working at the NSA. Prominent names listed in the NSA database of troublemakers include Bill Gertz, who's a very well-known guy yep. that bus news, particularly military. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Bamford, Vernon uh, Lieb. Loeb. Loeb. Loeb, that's right, Loeb. James Risen. 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 Um, uh, Dr. John K. Daly. Daly. I know, I knew that one. I was just testing <laughs> it. And then Wayne, Wayne Madsen and Seymour Hirsch. Oh, like Cy our, Hirsch. Yeah, we had him on. Yeah, well, we didn't yeah. have him on. We read his news story. Yeah, last, yeah, last yeah. Week. About the uh, probably Cheney's very upset about him saying about how they talked about building those ships to look like Iranians. Wow, to have them yeah, attack us. That's true. Uh, these were names uh, Matt Madsen published, but there are of course many others. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, that's that's the the basics of it. But wow. uh, they're pulling off the gloves. You know, it used to be they'd tase you and hang you. Well, no, they just you know, make I'm, you I'm, I'm a future quake. <laughs> well, thank you very much. So much for the compliments and encouragement. Well, i got to poke you once in a while. Uh-huh. Well, um, you know, it used to be in the old days they just intimidate you. Now they tase you and hang you. So I don't know what they're referring to about this kind of stuff. So Well, it's interesting that this has come up. I have a good friend of mine who's an ex-Marine. and uh, There is uh, no such thing as an ex-Marine. He's an ex-Marine. What, he's disavowed Marina? They threw him out? Well, they didn't throw him out. They, that's the one thing Marines say. They, they're, 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 you're always a Marine. Well, he's disavowed the Marines. Like, did he break his sword over his knee and cut the patches off and the buttons? Well, probably not nothing like that. But Okay, he anyway. Is, he has a friend who, and this story, this story comes to me secondhand, so I have not confirmed all this, mm-hmm. but he told me of a friend of... Uh, a friend of his whom I, whom I have met and I know does run a blog uh, back when the uh, back when we first invaded Iraq uh, he was writing writing on this stuff and he said it seems like it's an intelligence cover up and none of the stuff seems clear and writing very scathing sort of emails uh, or blogs rather based in fact um, and somebody that knew his wife who worked at the CIA called him and said uh, called her and said hey, you need to uh, tell your husband to knock it off because there are people watching his stuff and they're really not liking what he's saying. Hmm. And this is someone connected to somebody you know. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Will? Is this me? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know... Uh I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's and not. It's pretty close to home. None of that. None of that. Now, I would like to say to our listeners, I haven't confirmed that stuff. Yeah. But I have talked to the individual who supposedly all this happened to, so I know that he exists and I know that he runs mm-hmm. blog. Well, I, it reminds me of the old adage they had in the Army Field Manual mm-hmm. uh, that told the, the front level infantrymen. They said, uh, "Look unimportant. The enemy may be low on ammo." So maybe that's what's working in our favor right now is that uh, we're just down in the noise of unimportance. I'd like to I'd like to think it's that it's the Lord doing something. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, well the Lord just keeps me from just messing myself up amongst anybody else doing it. Well, you know, sometimes I think he has he has his hands full with that with me as well. Yeah. But then again, you know, his power is infinite. So that's right. We're he can he can juggle another ball. Right. Do you have another story for us? I do. Okay. Our time's a wasting. <clears throat> is this a quick one? I can make it quick. This one is from Debka. Oh, you know what? No, let's go. Yeah, this this one is from Debka. Here we go. Okay. The U.S. concedes Kremlin's first military response in Georgia was legitimate. 
Now, wait, th- this Debka source yes. is one that's very popular at the Pentagon with mm-hmm. military, uh, strong influence from Israeli Defense Force, very mm-hmm. pro-Israel attitude, which is very interesting looking at this, given that Israel was strongly on the side of Georgia. Mm-hmm. But this is one that you're saying that the ambassador is saying that um, the, the Russia response... The U.S. Response is conceding is that the Kremlin's first military response in Georgia was legitimate. Okay, read further. The U.S. ambassador to Moscow endorsing Russia's initial moves in Georgia described the Kremlin's first military response as legitimate after Russian troops came under attack. This was the first positive statement by an American official about Moscow's first response to the Georgian invasion of South Ossetia after a string of condemnations from the heads of the Bush Bush administration. It came from U.S. ambassador John Beryl, I believe that's how you say that, who arrived in Moscow last month in an interview published by the Russian Daily Commerçant, Friday, August 20, the 22nd. Uh, Deb Kinnett Weekly disclosed Friday in its lead article that Washington and Moscow are working quietly and intensively to set up a summit between President George W. Bush and Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin to bring crisis-ridden U.S.-Russian relations back on an even keel. Uh, both powers are pushing for a, a Bush-Putin summit. Hmm. Um. Let's see. That's kind of the that's kind of the gist of it, really. Okay. So so basically, people on our side are admitting, after all our media saying how horrible Russia was to go in there and do what they did, our own ambassador is saying, well, they did they, they were did in the, the right. right thing. Yeah. They Georgia attacked first. I I've only heard that on Future Quake. I've not heard that on any other television or radio show. Well. Um. You heard it here first, I guess. So why should anybody even bother listening to any other media yeah. sources other forget, than here? Forget Fox News. It's I would best su- spelled F-A-U-X. I would, I would <laughs> recommend you spend your time gardening, doing something with the kids, whatever, that you would other waste watching any of the news sources, ex- yeah. except for Future Quake. Well, it's easy to see, you know, like I had one friend get so so angry at the news just last night. He was like yelling at the TV I heard. That's insane. Yeah, I know. I can't imagine. Three in the morning. What, you heard that from Mrs. Future? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're <laughs> embellishing. There was no yelling going on. I'm just repeating what I heard. <laughs> well, I, our time is about up. Can I get through a yes. couple quick things? Because yes. these are very relevant. Yeah. They may be overcome by events by the time our listeners yeah. have heard this. Uh, our listeners it. may be in bunkers right now at the time they're listening to this uh Hearing mm-hmm. this transmitted. Interesting that they have space. radio and internet connections. And it's yeah. amazing, amazing yeah. things happen. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Russian and U.S. ships confronted each other at, at Georgian port. Uh, this is uh, from uh, Tuesday, August 26th. Uh, it says uh, the Russian Black Sea missile cruiser Moskva. Uh, let's see. Excuse me. The the U.S. Embassy in Tbilisi said Tuesday the two warships will deliver aid to Georgia Wednesday through the Black Sea port of Poti. Poti, I, I believe. Yes. Um, then uh, the day after Russian forces announced they would search all incoming cargoes. This is the same setup that happened with the Cuban Missile Crisis, by the way. Uh, the first U.S. aid warship docked at Batumi Saturday to avoid friction with the Russian naval infantry and armored forces which control the Poti port. So they chickened out. Now they're making the gauntlet run directly on the heart of the Russian ships. Whoa. The Black wow. Sea confrontation between Russia and the U.S.-led naval, uh, NATO forces predicted last week on Debka is building up to a climax. In Moscow, Debka's military sources report Captain Igor Daigalo, deputy commander of the Russian Navy, announced that the Moskva missile cruiser will carry out a naval exercise on the Black Sea. The Russians are clearly marking out their control of the Black Sea in the face of the USS McFall guided missile destroyer's arrival with aid for Georgia. It's funny they put an aid ship that's a guided missile destroyer. Uh, our sources report that McFall carries 50 Tomahawk cruise missiles capable of striking land and sea targets. Captain Daigalo said the Moskva would practice its wire-guided weapons, communications, and missile guidance systems. The exercise will no doubt interfere with the movements of NATO vessels, as clearly intended. Russian Deputy Chief of Staff General Anatoly uh, Nogovitsyn reported Monday of nine Western vessels in the Black Sea, two American, four Turkish, and the rest Polish and Spanish. He said their presence was not a cause for concern. However, Debka's military sources report that a clash is becoming inevitable. 
whether amongst these hostile fleets or over Russian troops' demand to search the cargoes of the two U.S. warships when they dock at Pody Wednesday. The U.S. Coast Guard cutter Dallas and the command and control USS Mount Whitney. The latter is equipped with facilities for commanding sea, land, and air combat operations. Whoa. Uh, this may be, this may be uh, you may be hearing this a little bit dated. Yeah. By the time. Uh, yeah, you get you might be hearing may, it from your shelter. Yeah, your your bunker, your ba- basically that's. I mean, you know, I I wasn't there. I was minus two yeah. when this or three when this happened. But yeah. the Cuban Missile Crisis was based basically a showdown mm-hmm. over trying to run a blockade. This Don't time an cross American this line. blockade. Yep. And you know we we're going to have to board ships and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're right there again. Wow. Even though it's in a faraway place. It's it's sort of like in their Cuba, sort of their back door versus ours this time. Yeah, but uh, this is serious business, and we need to pray about it. We don't mean to make light yeah. of it. Uh, can I do just a couple of paragraphs on something real quick sure. related to that, and then we'll do. we'll wrap her up. Um, the Russian president Dmitry Medvedev, um, it says basically that they are ready for a not afraid of a cold war after approving the Georgian region's independence. Uh, the the move sparked a sharp exchange between Washington and Moscow. Uh, the Russian president warned of military responses to the U.S. Mil- missile shield in Europe, uh, s- signing the decrees confirming South Ossetian and Abkhazian de- independence. Uh, the Russian president uh, said that they're prepared to go to any length to defend the enclaves. We're not afraid of anything, including the prospect of a Cold War. Uh, wow. Of course, we don't need yeah we don't need that. Everything depends on the stance of our partners and world community. Um, and it was approved unanimously by the Russian upper house. Uh, they're also planning further sanctions against Georgia and its U.S. NATO backers in Eastern Europe. Uh, U.S. State Department says the recognition of their independence of these provinces is violation of Georgian territorial integrity, hmm. inconsistent with international law. U.S. Foreign Secretary says the same thing. Russia has canceled a visit by NATO Secretary General. Uh, he, they are weighing halting cooperation with the NATO alliance, uh, and a NATO ambassador says a new understanding is needed to be reached. So, wow! I know we got to go. Let's go. Um, but first, we can let I got Merv tell us uh, how you can let get a hold of us. So, yeah. Merv, come on in and tell how you can get a hold of us. Future Quake radio broadcasts are archived at www.futurequake.com, suitable for downloading or streaming, as well as other show information. Email Dr. Future and Tom Bionic at drfuture at futurequake.com. That's D-R-F-U-T-U-R-E at futurequake.com. Tell us your name, city, and radio station or internet, and if we can use your name on air. Comments on the show's topics or guests or suggestions for future show topics or guests are most welcome. Dr. Future and Tom will discuss selected emails each week during the radio broadcast. Okay, that's it for another week. We got like 10, 15 seconds. Any comments? Scary. Yeah, very intense. Intense. Um, next couple of months, your vibe's telling you they're going to be... Mm, boy, I don't know. We're not prophets. We're yeah. not saying we're prophets. No. But I, I may, you may want to stockpile food. Stay tuned to Future Quake. Mm-hmm. Disregard other news sources. Stay tuned to Future Quake. If you need to get a whole story ahead of the week, it's at futurequake.com mm-hmm. uh, for, for a whole week. Until next week, we pray for your protection for you and your family. Till then, uh, Tom and I we hope send you our warmest regards and hope yes. it's very bright. Have a good day. Sign R. Join us next time as we dare to experience another aftershock of a future quake. 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 quake.